Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. My name is Andrew Sumner and I am privileged to be joined by my friends from Blizzard, Sean and Steve. Sean Copeland and Steve Daninzer. Great to see you guys again. How have you been since we last met? It's super awesome. We uh, uh, just really excited to talk to you again. Uh, it was a great time. Let's do it again. Yeah, let's 100%. make it happen. <laughs> and uh, my friends here are here to speak to me about uh, World of Warcraft, Folk and Fairy Tales of Azeroth which is a, a new collection of short stories out now from Titan Books, which you can order from the links attached to this conversation. Now, before we get into the fabric of this, because Steve, I know you have a story that's, that's inside this collection that I'd like to talk about, mm -hmm. but what was the genesis of this project? Well, you know, we, we, we do a lot of books about World of Warcraft and they tend to be, you know, there's a lot of novels. A lot of times they're novels that are set between our different expansions that kind of tie the world together. Uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, we've done cookbooks, we've done a, a lot of different collections, but one of the things we hadn't done was something that really kind of delved into the mythology of the world. You know, uh, as a kid growing up, I was I was always in encyclopedias reading like stories about Zeus and about Athena and, and all of these mythological characters. And like, that was part of what built my kind of creative and fan DNA. Uh, and Azeroth had all these kind of myths kind of sprinkled through the game and you could come upon them every once in a while, but there was no kind of concentrated place to, to pull older myths that existing ones together with kind of new folk and fairy tale stories. And so uh, our book team came forward with this kind of idea and we just fell in love with it because it was a great opportunity to delve into a side of Azeroth that's different than playing the game and adventuring and saving the world. This is about understanding the people who inhabit it and know what their stories are. And it was just a really fun way to do that. Yeah, that, um, that, that's awesome, well said. And um, before I talk to Steve about his story in this collection, um, Sean, do you, do you have any particular favorites among these stories that you would personally pull out? Um, yeah, actually, one of my favorite moments, uh, to actually rewind a little bit, uh, as a historian, I get to be kind of like a forest ranger for a lot of the authors that were telling these stories in these folk and fairy tales. So they were like, tell me everything about humans, trolls. My favorite, though, was the uninvited guest. Uh, no offense, Steve, I love Visage Day. We worked really <laughs> closely to that. But there was a moment uh, in the uninvited guest when I, uh, the author, Cami Garcia, completely, not only say completely new, but she asked the, the typical question, tell me everything about goblins. Tell me about their, 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 their history. Luckily, we had written a lot of uh, the backstory for the goblins in Stephen I's tale, Grimoire of the Shadowlands and Beyond. Um, but uh, sharing that tale and being able to weave it into the story of the uninvited guest was like marrying two works that we had done together into together and make it feel like a more cohesive uh, universe. Like a lot of these, uh, stories will do that. But this one is really close to me, especially because the author was really cool to work with. She was very receptive. She was interested. Oh, no, tell me more about how this makeup is, because I you, you make it sound great. I was just happy to geek out with all of this knowledge that I have stuffed up in my brain and hidden away every place. Just bring it all together. Like, this is my stuff. Look what a cool story you can tell. That's awesome, mate. I mean, this is where I think both of you guys are truly privileged because, you know, that you don't speak to that many people uh, in the course of your life. And I'm very lucky to do this job and speak to a lot of people like this who, who are actually doing the thing about which they are passionate, right, um, for a living. And it would seem to me that, you know, essentially that there is there are three branches of people I meet for whom that is often true. People in the entertainment industry, whether it's uh, the performing or whether the, the, they make music. Um, sports people, you know, football players, soccer players, baseball players. Uh, and then, you know, the people who work in the creative industries, you know, kind of like gaming, like comic books, writing, you know, uh, and to be able to sit and talk about what is the fabric of your working day on a work project, Sean, but in the terms that you've just um, described them, I think that is to be truly blessed, mate. Thank you. I, I really try to be humble about it because I know what goes into it, but mostly I know how much trust goes into it. I don't want to leave any of these authors or creators astray, so I want to make sure that I'm giving them the, the closest truth that we know of to that, that possible so I can know that and share that so they don't have to worry about it. They can just lean on me to tell the story they want to tell. Right. And Sean and his team are, are just indispensable, uh, not only on, on books, but for the game team, we're always reaching out to them. They're keeping us honest. 
They're keeping us on the, the, the true North Star. They provide so much depth, so many ideas and inspiration. Uh, it's really a privilege to work with Sean and his team. Likewise, Steve. Oh, amazing, guys. Just amazing. And on that note, um, Steve, what can you tell me about Visage Day? Which yeah, is, so which is your story in this collection? Uh, yeah, that's the. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to write a story for this uh, uh, collection, and uh, yeah, the the genesis of it was, you know, as we were talking about different kinds of fairy tales, we had like classic kind of uh, world creation myths, how different peoples would would think about that. We had uh, stories like the uninvited guests that were more like a. Uh, kind of a scary tale that you might tell kids around a campfire and and to keep them on the, the right path. And just thinking about those different kinds of, of kind of classic fairy tales and folklore. Um, one of the things that um, I always remember from as a kid were the stories like, you know, how the, how the tiger got its stripes or, you know, how the elephant got its trunk and things like that. And I started thinking, well, what kinds of what kind of story could I tell about that? And in the in the Warcraft universe, we have dragons who are these elevated, very mythical creatures. Everybody knows what dragons are. But one of the one of the things about um, dragons in the Warcraft universe is that they they besides having their big dragon form, they also have this mortal form that they they can shift into. And I started thinking about that and being like, well, hmm, how does a dragon pick? what their form is you know it's not because all of them that we've shown had very specific kinds of forms and uh there was one dragon in particular that kind of stood out to me that that fans will know well it's a dragon called uh chromie and uh the interesting thing about chromie is that she becomes uh she goes from this big bronze dragon into this little gnome this little female gnome and uh, what was interesting about it when I was, was uh, delving into it is that uh, Chromie's dragon name, uh, Chromie's like a short, a nickname, uh, but Chromie's dragon name uh, was actually fit the, the male uh, form of dragon. So, and so I reached out to Sean and Sean talked about our conversation, if you would. Again, we was talking about how uh, all the, I know where all the, the pieces are buried. I know where all the story threads are, are hidden away. Uh, I, I came to Steve and I was like, this is one of those story threads, Steve. Um, I know that you, it's a great idea and I want to double down on what you're planning because it's something that I've wanted to tell as a historian for a very long time. It's a, a, I have a, a spreadsheet full of these threads, just so in case that we have moments like that, we can further leverage them into the franchise and make them feel really resonant. Uh, there's kind of a check that I like to do, um, and I, a lot of our fellow creators do it, is, is the goosebump check. Does it, does it make you feel, ooh, that actually is a story that, yeah, let, let's chase that. Immediately when Steve was pitching that, he didn't know I had the story thread. He was just asking me about this character, and I really, I feel like there's something there. I'm like, Oh, Steve, yes, yes, 100%. And let me share everything that I have. So gave him my little bucket of lore that I've had on that story thread and every single VO line interaction that we had to reinforce that, okay, we haven't gone there before. Let's tell that story. And I'm really happy that Steve got a chance to do it because there was a level of care and love that I think, and this is no disrespect to any other writer, of course, I, I work with a lot of really awesome folks, but working with Steve, and it's because we work so closely, I can tell that he wanted to get it right. And Steve really wanted to make this, that goosebump check resonate. So hopefully that comes across when folks read it because it definitely did to me. Uh, guys, that's brilliant. Steve, you've got yeah. anything to add? Yeah, so so I, I took that stuff, all the, the wonderful information that Sean gave and the fact that, that, that Chromie had been called Cronormu uh, in the, the a male name, and I thought about again about that choosing a form, choosing a visage, and I realized that well, what if you know if Chromie had been born a male and decided to become a female dragon, a female gnome, what would that mean, and and how could we represent that? And and so this the story tells her journey of meeting with other dragons, talking to them, learning about them, why they made the choices they made in terms of their form, and then it kind of culminates in this visage day ceremony where, okay, this is where the dragon announces their form to everyone. And that's when Kronormu, he makes the choice to become Chromie and take on her appearance. And, and that's how she wanted the world to see her. So it, it was really both a, a story to tell the mythology of dragons in our world and to let people see themselves in this world of, of Warcraft. We, we, we want to show that Azeroth is this very diverse place that has uh, acceptance and love in it. And, and I don't want to spoil the story, but 
the the way that everyone reacts when Chromie makes her choice and announces it. Um, it's it's just uh, just really wanted to impart the beauty and love that sharing an experience like that between family, between friends uh, can be. So hopefully it's a very positive story that people can can take and, and see Azeroth and see themselves in that world too. That wonderfully and beautifully said, mate. And um, if you want to share in that beautiful moment and you're watching this, check out Folk and Fairy Tales of Azeroth, where you're going to be able to read Visage Day and all these other wonderful stories. And it's available to order from the links attached to this conversation right now. And uh, Sean, Steve, wonderful to see both of you guys again. And I hope you come back on the show sooner rather than later to tell me about some of the other awesome stuff that you're working on. It'd be great. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely time, Andrew. Um, we've always got stuff coming down the coming down the pipeline. So we'll be excited to talk with you again. Fantastic. Always Thanks great to see us. you guys. Oh what, oh, what did you say then, Sean? I'll say thank you for having us, sir. Oh, always, mate. Mate, <laughs> mate, thank you for coming on the show. I'm the one who's privileged. I'm the one who's blessed. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys again. Thanks for being such great guests. You take care of yourselves. All right. Take you take care, too. Yeah. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.